So he said, I should look for that which is the gate of God. Now, when we're reading this, he said, this is what people do. Let's talk about the economic situations. He said, my people proceed down to Egypt without consulting me. To take refuge. Now, let's be clear about it. They proceed down. Now, you know, each, listen, let me say something to you. In each generation, there's a place people go to. In each generation, there is a place they go to. There was a time Ghanaians were coming to Nigeria. You remember that? Okay, some of, most of you were, were not born that time. <laughs> All of you are laughing. How many of you were born when Ghanaians were coming to Nigeria for econ- as economic refugees? Oh, many people here don't even know it happened. It's long ago. Actually, it's long ago. It's long ago. I, no, really, it's long ago. They left... They started leaving around 85. <laughs> you don't locate yourself. <laughs> so it's got, it's got a while ago. It's got a while ago. It's not recent. Then, of course, you know when Nigerians started going abroad? A mass. That began around which year now? Then I'm not asking those small, small boys. I'm asking John. <laughs> but some years ago, uh, at the time I was in university, my teachers were exiting the country like this. I remember Andrew Don't Check Out. I don't know how many people saw that advert. Andrew Don't Check Out. You saw it? You did? How old were you that time? Were you wearing trousers at that time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was long ago. That was um, late 80s. That was when and Andrew checking out thing became the thing. The guy, they showed him at the airport. When I was a mid-level medical student, most of my lecturers went off to Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia is training again. I hope you know that. Amongst doctors, it's training again. Oh, now it's training again. People have, they are going. Saudi opened its doors again. They need a lot of people. And Nigerians have, for them, cheap labor. And for Nigerians, man, that's a lot of dollars, man. <laughs> yeah, it's training again. So in each generation, there are times people move. Um, what It happened in, 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 the, in, in Israel at the time. People went to Moab. Moab was where it was happening. And that was where Elkanah, took um, um, Naomi to, and then his two sons. And that they didn't come, he didn't come back, the boys did not come back. Israel improved, so they had to return. By that time, the two guys, the three men were dead. Um, Naomi came back all alone with, with, with um, Ruth. We know the story. So in a generation, it happens. It's a natural thing, please. That's what I want, to, I want you to understand. It's natural. It's not evil in itself. It's not good. It's natural. Okay? So, what I'm saying is natural. is for us to understand that it's not an evil thing in itself, but it's also not a good thing. It's just neither here nor there. Now, but, I started by explaining that your life is not average. You cannot live your life naturally, otherwise you will experience only natural things. What I mean by experience natural things? If accidents are happening, your life will just be part of the accidents happening. Because you donated yourself to natural order of things. If Ebola comes, you get your portion. There's no, you know, sometimes Christians don't understand. Let me just drop it. You know, I keep on digressing to drop a few spiritual principles. You have to be careful that you don't donate yourself to negative things from the beginning. You know, there's something God says, and people, most of us who preach faith don't want to say it. It's a matter of fact. There are times you call, God says, I will not answer. Do you know why? You call at the wrong time. Wisdom said that, look, I'm, I'm crying out now. Oh, naive ones, descend wisdom. You don't know anything. I'm telling you now. He said, the time will come, you will call. I will not answer. When is that time? He said, that time your calamity will have come. The thing I wanted to warn you about will come. And when it has come, I will not answer. Listen, ah, there's a part of my message that I don't like preaching. But it's as if the Lord has put it on my mouth, I have to. There are times you will get into a trouble, and God will come and say, Oh boy, oh girl, I'm your father, I love you, so you know what I'm going to do? I will stay with you here through the trouble, but you're not coming out. We will stay here together. That is the best I can do for you. Deliverance? Mm -mm. If you wanted deliverance, you should have listened to me last year. I cried on this matter. If you remember, the first time you heard a preaching that hit you on this subject was in 2015. It went on for a month. You shut your ears to it. I let you be. 
by the end of that year, this was January, February, by the end of that year, I brought up the matter again. Each time it will be a book somebody gives you, or something somebody corrects you about, or a discussion, or a church service you went to. I know what I'm doing. There are people who run away from church services because they want to hear certain voices. God says, no problem. That one went on for another three weeks. You shut the voice down. I left you alone. Then 2017, I came up with the matter again around June, July. This time around, it was a senior friend that you knew from university that he called you and said to you, what is going on in this area, this area? And he sat you down pointedly and talked to you about this. You did not listen. That's the third time. The last time I brought up this matter was last year. And you wouldn't listen. Now what you were warned about has happened. I will not forsake you. That's what I said. I will never leave you. Neither will I ever what? Forsake you. But I will not deliver you. So what I will do is I will stay with you there. If it's a headache, during the night, you will shout. I will let you bang for five minutes and I will rub your head. Then the headache will cool down. It will last two days. But it will not be as bad as it should have been. You will feel my love, oh. loving kindness. But oh girl, oh boy, this deliverance is not coming. Let me just warn you ahead of time. It's going to last five years. So get ready. That is one part of Christian messages we don't preach. And I think the Lord has given that one to me to add to the body of Christ. Let me understand. I would never leave you, neither will I, will I forsake you. But there is a time you will call for deliverance. I will not grant it. Why? The time. That's what is called the time of visitation. Don't let your time of visitation pass. He said, oh, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. What does that tell you? This gospel of grace we preach is a lie. As if it doesn't matter, God never judges. Who told you? There are people that, look, <laughs> listen to me. Let me say it again about sin. The Bible tells us, John wrote to us directly. He said there is sin that is unto death, and there is sin that is not unto death. People have asked, and Paul also wrote, anyway, he said, if Paul wrote from my, um, Hebrews, that if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of sins, there remains no sacrifice for such sins. Okay? Now, if you put those two scriptures together, yeah, those of us who preach grace, we avoid them. We run away. That's when I say grace. Now, hyper, what they call hyper grace, excessive grace. We avoid them. Now, if you put it together, people have asked me, what is a sin that is not unto death? That is unto death as against the one that's not unto death that John talked about. I have, I, I believe I have understanding about it. What is the sin? I'm not teaching them in details now. I've talked about it before. But what is the sin that is not unto death? In summary, it's something you are doing. Maybe one, you did not know it was wrong. Or two, you have not been corrected. That's basically what it is. Any, every sin is a sin not unto death. Every single one. Almost all of them. What is the sin that is unto death? It is not one type of sin and another type of sin. It is the same sin. The difference is that this one you have been corrected. That's the difference. A sin is converted from a sin that is not unto death unto, into one that is unto death by correction. Once your attention has been brought to it and it's been pointed out to you and the Spirit has enlightened you to know this is wrong, if you still persist, that is when it says there, is, there remaineth what? No sacrifice for such things. That what comes afterwards is judgment. And it was written to Christians. What many of us don't know is that sin, the judgment for each sin differs. I hope you're getting my point. Yeah, it differs. It's not all of them that sends to hell and internal damnation. No, it differs. Some of them is financial judgment. It says this one, you're not crossing this level financially for the next 15 years. There's no story you want to tell. It's just stayed there. And let me tell you the truth. If you now want to die eternally, Rush, decide. 
You know what, what, what Jeremiah said? Hmm? We should read this. I've not said this, I've not read this in a long time. Let's just get down to it. Jeremiah said, It is good for a young man to bear his burden in the days of his youth. There's a way he said it, eh, which I want, us, I want us to get. Okay, there's one scripture around that area I want to read. Let me just, let me get it out, please. Hmm. Christianity is a is serious business. You know, I keep on saying it. It's in Lamentations. Go to Lamentations chapter 3. It should be around chapter 3. Yeah, it's chapter 3. Let me start from verse 21. I just want to get, capture something before it. This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. What do I recall to mind? The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He said in verse 24, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I have hope in him. It is good, he said the Lord is good to those who do what? Wait for him. To the person who seeks him. He said it is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he should bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone. This is where I'm going. Verse 28. Let him sit alone and be silent. Since he has laid it on him. That is the Lord has laid that yoke on him. Look at what the yoke is saying. Verse 29. Let him put his mouth in the dust. Perhaps there is hope. Let him give his cheek to the smiter. Let him be filled with reproach. For the law will not reject forever. I told you that he said I will never leave you or forsake you. <laughs> he said, for if he causes grief, then he will have compassion. According to his abundant loving kindness. For he does not afflict willingly or grieve the sons of men. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the land. To deprive a man of justice in the presence of the Most High. Now, let me just stop reading here for time's sake, okay? I don't want to analyze that in the, everything, but I want to bring out something here. You know what Jeremiah will say? If the Lord tells the man, stay here. I will cap here financially for the next 15 years. He said if he tries to get out from that place, he's putting himself in jeopardy. Jeremiah said, let him stay there. He said, let him endure the smiting of the cheek. Let him endure humiliation. It's a sign of repentance. It is. It is a sign of repentance. Isaiah carried it further and said, anyone who kindles his own fire. He said, when the Lord says, stay there, like Jeremiah was saying in that chapter 3 of Lamentations. He said, if you kindle your own fire... He said, this you will have of the hand of the Lord. You will lie down in torment. That's what Isaiah said. He said, because, you see, if God keeps the man cold, he was saying, in this situation where John said he should stay, where Isaiah, Jeremiah said he should stay, he said, if he goes out of his own way to deliver himself by force, and listen, how do you know you are delivering yourself by force? You will always have to do something that is wrong. That is it. And listen, every iniquity like that has explanation. It's not explanation. Everybody knows how the color of the country is. You know, this, this is, uh, which season are we in now? School fees. No school fees season is still on. You know, school started last week or two weeks ago. Yes. So you know this is school fees season. How will a man pay? How much am I earning? You are saying I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I should not take bribes. Look, this is how a man gets by. Because there's no trouble. Once you justify what is iniquity, all right? What is iniquity? You justify it. It's called kindle your own fire. This is the word of the Lord. You will lie down in torment. So what God, what Jeremiah said? He said it is good to wait for the Lord. Listen to me. When he says good to wait for the Lord, you see, you must understand how when this Bible is talking. You will not say it is good to wait for the Lord if waiting for the Lord is partying and drinking and eating and having fun and everything. You just say, hey, so what I do? We are waiting for the Lord. Come on now, waiting for the Lord. Say it again, waiting for the Lord. <laughs> and they bring better food to wait for the Lord. God won't waste his time saying it's good to wait for the Lord. He won't waste his time saying it. Let me tell you how, why he says it is good. Because he'll come to you, say, bros, have you eaten? No, why? There's no money. Say, okay, it's good to wait for the Lord. 
Say, where I'm walking, they don't pay so much. It says it is good to wait for the Lord. You know what it means? Go back to work. Be faithful. It is good to wait for the Lord. Whether you are in judgment, you know what I mean? Just recompense and reward for iniquity or not. It is good to wait for the Lord. I hope you're getting my point. Please. So, like I was saying, every season in life, there is a way the whole nation, there is a way the peoples will go in a crowd to deliver themselves from trouble. What is our, of course, like I can tell you that time when I was in school, everybody, all my senior colleagues went off to Saudi Arabia and countries around there. Most Nigerians face just two places. Well, most, I didn't say all. They face two main places. Where? UK and United States. Then a few years ago, maybe like two, three years ago, Canada threw the doors open and everybody is going there again. And please, don't tell me God said you should go. It annoys me when you are doing what everybody is saying and you are telling me God said. Just leave God out of do what you want to do. How come God never told you to go to Sudan? Sudan has been open for a long time. You did not go. I hope you're getting my point. How come God has never spoken to you to go to Malawi? All these countries that they were analyzing for me a few days ago. Anytime God wants to speak, this God only speaks. <laughs> it's only Canada and United States that he speaks about. I have friends in the United States that have a lot. And I respect them because they didn't come to me saying that God said. They just got to me and said, guys, this is the next level in life. And they moved. But when you want to go where everybody has gone, everybody in your street is going to, let me say, God said. Please don't use the word God said. Go anywhere you like. It's your life, not mine. And like I always say, <laughs> I'm not saying God ever says so. <laughs> but he, he, he hardly says what everybody is doing already. He hardly says it. It's not necessary. Everybody is doing it. What special communication do you expect? Most of us just want to do what we want to do. But we have to, you know, because of our brethren, we have to hold God responsible. Every generation has a way by which they solve problems. That's what I'm saying. And God said, listen, that's the problem I have with my people. They treat themselves as average people. They don't understand if everybody is broke around, but you as a child of God, of course, there are ten people broke, but you are one of those ten. The reason why you are broke is different. It has nothing to do with the economy. In fact, the economy is likely a response to the iniquity of all of you as a church. That's what God is telling us. That is, now, this is my personal conviction. I'm not saying it's the word of God, what I'm about to say. The last, this economic downturn that Nigeria has, you know, we had a bit of prosperity. It lasted for over, over 10 years, actually. All right, which things were just kind of booming. Businesses were opening. People were doing things here and there. Then the dollar was, you know, after a while, if I didn't know the dollar went to 180, I don't know, some time ago, it came back to 120. I don't know how many people remember. It went to 180, came back to like 120, 130. It stayed there. I know because, I mean, we're paying Omega Channel in U.S. dollars. So I was following these things. If I remember one man, daddy was like, ah, I don't know what's going on. He had bought dollars, he opened it to go up. They think he kept sliding back, sliding back. He hit 150. Came back to around 140. Stabilized. For some time. Then finally, he started climbing. And he hit 400. That's the period I'm, I'm telling you my conviction. I haven't analyzed it because at that time I knew a bit about what's going on in the world. That's Nigeria world and even beyond. And you no know, economics, econometrics and stuff like that. I looked at everything. And I said, who's responsible this time? I said, it's the church. I didn't want to spend the money. I don't know. But I watched the way Christians behaved. And I realized that God had no choice but to call us back to order. We're going mad. We prospered so much. You know what I started doing? We we're building towers of Babel everywhere. They told me once a church bought iron, you know, steel rods, steel, until there was no forex available anywhere in the country. One church bought steel rods and forex finished. I was asking that God spoke to them to build. Doesn't impress me. God doesn't need to speak to you to be. That thing annoys me. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. If if you see me get up tomorrow, kingdom of Bison starts building, it's because two things happened. We have the need and we have the money. If I come and say the Lord spoke to us to build, just say Pastor Bang is now telling lies. Even if the Lord spoke to me, 
You understand? I won't tell you because I'm, I will prove that he's the one that said I won't put him under that pressure. If I get up tomorrow, I say, uh, Kingdom One Ministry wants to build headquarters. Listen, two things happened. We have a serious need and the door opened. And when I say door opened, I don't mean door open and then we are owing everybody. I mean door opened to build, Panasha door opened, I looked into the account, I looked at the land, <coughs> we paid for it. It was laid foundation because I won't change what I, you, you've seen me, those of you who've known me for long enough, you never seen me come here and whine about money. Oh, in case you think that, oh, the Lord always supplied, that is part of it. The other half is called discipline. Oh, the other half is called discipline. There's one scripture I operate. David said, I don't involve myself in matters too difficult for me. If I have to come and start raising money to do that matter, it's too difficult. Uh, that is, I know God supplies them, but the first thing he gave us is discipline. That was the first thing he gave. I mean, for those of you who know, we were somewhere before we came here. In case you know, that small Longo place, that small place we did there, eh? It was from that, one woman came from Abuja once, came to Enugu, said, let her find kingdom of me. When he entered the place, she laughed. Like, eh? See the pastor in front. If I stone him from here, he said, he go hit him. <laughs> she laughed. I still remember that day. Somebody came and told me later. I said, the woman just looked. Just look us like, look to the left, look to the right. Eh? So these things that have been shaking us in Abuja, this is where they produce it. Look at the factory, say, it's not even fine. <laughs> One mother entered kingdom of me at that time. He said, oh, God, you are going to twist this place up. I almost slapped him. <laughs> I felt like saying that, how much money have you given me to twist the place up? Have you ever had any complaint when you listened to me before coming here? You came here and I saw the place is not fine. Maybe you came from an air-conditioned church. Everything is tush, 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 tush. My tushness, amen, <laughs> is in the quality of the word that we produce. When we needed to move from that place, we kept. One brother called me and said, Okay, when are we buying that is? And he's a very good man, so he wasn't trying to put me under unnecessary pressure. I said, Look, Enugu, where I live. I said, The decent plot of land I gave him that the minimum kingdom work will require to do anything, I said, is about 3,000 square meters. I said, Where I live, bros, 1,000 square meters is 22 million naira. Multiply it by three. 66 million. I said, you want me to sell for 60 million? I said, I'm not doing it. Do you want land? Yes. The one that God kept in heaven. Right now? On this earth? No. And let me tell you the truth. Eh? The day land will be one billion in Enugu and we need it. We will have two billion by the time we are paying. That has, look, from time, that's how God and me we have operated. Many times people put it under unnecessary pressure. Where we used to be, I was testified to you guys at that time. When we left, the family, they were surprised. Look, they said we are the best tenants they've ever had. Ask Israel. We went together to go and see the, 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 one of the sons. Just to thank them for hosting us for all these years. They said we were one tenant that never owed money. We never owed. There are times we will pay because we're supposed to pay maybe in February. One of the guys in the family just said, Ah, Pastor Bang, do you mind paying us in December? I said, Israel, no problem. Please, when you are going, give him a check. Listen, my own is that if you want to hear what, come on time. <laughs> yeah. We did that until God miraculously relocated us here. And when we moved over here, in case you don't know, our rent went up by, it went up I think fourfold. We are paying four times here what we are paying there. Is that the truth? I'm not exaggerating. We are far richer now. Just in one year. Now when we left there. Please, so, God supplies. Part of it is discipline. Some of you are going to rent duplex. Oh yeah, stay there. Because you got one contract. You didn't realize that <laughs> this is one, not two, not three, it's one. And from that single job, because it was big, you rented a duplex, bought a, an expensive car. You could even buy one that your neighbor has old parts you can use to change. You went and bought one that each time you have to call Costaris. 
Should I give you advice? Pack out, sell the car. There's no hum- God will not deliver. Forget all this deliverance you are praying for that's not coming. I say, ah, you are packed out from the duplex you are staying in. He say, bros, I check out. Now only me and my wife and one child. Duplex is too big and we didn't have... The- Don't stop it there. Finish the story. <laughs> Finish the story. Say, we didn't have the money to pay. So I checked that. I went there foolishly. God has corrected my foolishness. I, let me tell you another thing. Digression. If you know, honesty will bless you in this life, this show off will not bless you. This trying to compare will not bless you. Those is when I was a young man in Lagos. <laughs> I didn't. Of course, how can a young man? See as I find, I not get moto. I didn't have a car. People say, why don't you have a car? I said, I went to the shop where they are selling it. They don't give it out free. <laughs> no, that was my answer. They don't give it out free. You see, you will save. Save what? One, day, one, one of my friends said, you will save. I said, I said, sit down. We work in the same place, right? So you know what I end. Yeah, show me how they buy decent cars from this income. Just show it to me. I said, show me. Maybe there's something you know I don't know. I said, show me. But one thing for sure, I never owed any bus driver. <laughs> there was no need to owe. <laughs> this is my wife, faithful wife, good wife, that I've married for 20 years now. I told her, when they, that, that, when they reach, I will, I, I, will, I will oppress in that good will, not the one God will punish. I will oppress everybody without my 20 years. I didn't want to talk. I said, wait, 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 when did you marry again? <laughs> <laughs> if there's a 20 years, I will tell you to kneel when you want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met my wife, I used, I, I used all kinds of styles to tell her what I did not have and how much I was earning. In fact, the day I visited her house, when I saw her father's house, ah, I said, Pari, you have to get the information correct. You didn't get it the first time. Because you married this guy, I, I entered their compound, I see swimming pool for backyard. Eh? <laughs> I looked again, looked again, say. In fact, I remember the first time, <laughs> you know me, I don't know, my mouth has been very funny for a long time. She said, I should come to, I should come, they're doing send off on their fellowship. I said, I came. I saw her. I called her, I said, wait, this, this cloth you are wearing, how come you are wearing something like this? They say, uh, her mother gave it to her. I said, honestly, I calculated the cost of the material. I knew that this was half of my mom's salary. This girl put for body one time. <laughs> you remember that your blue, that your blue lace? I looked at it like, what? People buy things like this and wear? <laughs> I didn't have the service. I called her the side. Though. Ah, now what is this thing final? <laughs> yes, thank you. I said, now what? <laughs> he said, no, no, she told me that she wears all kinds of things. I said, you better wear all kinds of things because... <laughs> <laughs> because... I don't know what he said, I, I, I won't wear print. I said, amen, you better not wear print. Look at this. <laughs> you know the kind, because, you know, I, I had a cousin, my auntie in Lagos that time, she was into sorry things, so I knew the, I knew the value. Ah, I looked the cloth like this, Jesus! Ah, I said, listen, no. I use all kinds of styles. I told the engagement way I bought for her, it was 300 naira. I remember one day my mother in law came to Enugu. When we first moved to Transekulo, <laughs> she came to our house. And we had a nice, you know, five bedroom flat. So she looked at her and said, ah, this is very nice. <laughs> now I don't want to to it, <laughs> which we laughed. She said, consider where you are coming from. <laughs> Because well, we said in loot for one year it was one tiny room like this tiny. Took my freshly married wife to one tiny room, which my wife missed. She missed it so much. Do you know why? Said that one you can't quarrel. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> there was nowhere, and the bed was tiny. It was like you know what they call ten spring bed, three and a half. Not for you know what they call four and a half. What they call family size, three and a half old spring. That sometimes you move the spring will come out, shook you small. You go push them back inside. <laughs> It was official quarters. What was I going to do? <laughs> How did I get into that? I don't even know. So when I say God will supply, part of it is discipline. No, it's discipline. 
keeping your eyes down, waiting for the Lord. Waiting for the Lord. Waiting for the Lord. But when I moved to Enter you know, honestly, I never stayed in a small house. Once I left the guest house, we moved into when we came, moved to our own house. From there, I moved to a big duplex. From there to a bigger one. When we built our house where we are living now. Listen, I told Bishop, our brother, the architect, oh boy, if I, <laughs> our furniture, my own, he entered. He said, oh God, there's only one bedroom I've seen in my life that's the same size as your own. He told me the name of the man. My friend from America, when he came to see the house, he said, Banky, this is not a bedroom. This is a hall. I'm not kidding. Those of you who have been to my bedroom, are you, gonna, you know what I'm talking about. But like one thing, what the, uh, the, the, the owner of this property said to me when he came to, you know, pray for the place because God helped him to, uh, God used him to encourage us and all of that. So I just said, oh God, things are happening when we started the work. So he came. He said something to me. He said, Pastor Banky, I like you. He said, you do your things at the right time. When he was driving, that's what he said. He said, I like the way you do things. You do your things at the right time. Well, I don't know how I got there. What was I preaching when I got to that point? I don't know. Now, why did I get to discipline? Is what I'm saying. Why did I? What was I saying when, <laughs> when I said go with supply? Yeah, waiting for the. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's a waiting thing. It's a waiting thing. That's so when Solomon was saying, when Jeremiah was saying, it is good to wait. When he was saying, it's good, it is good to wait. He wasn't saying when you are waiting. Are you getting me? Everything just be sweet. No, the time of waiting is a time of constraint. Sometimes the economy is down. God, they don't go anywhere. Wait there. Say, but things are tight. Say, tighten the way you spend. The, people think it's faith. You know, the, there's one, you know, the, the marriage vow, the, the traditional marriage vow, for better, for worse. Faith people came and threw it away. I never agree with them one day. They say it is for better, for best. Listen to me. That's not faith. I'm sorry to say what I'm about to say. It's stupidity. It's not confession of faith. It shows you don't know anything. You don't know life. You are what Solomon calls a foolish man. If you want to take a marriage vow and you tell me you are declaring for better, for best, for better, I say it's faith. It is not faith. You don't know life. The Bible says Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. That same Jesus went to the cross one day. That same Jesus stood one day and looked at Peter. said, are you not going to go to? Because the church has scattered. Everybody had left him. What faith do you know that he does not know? That same Jesus looked at Peter and said, To whom shall it be? Are you not good? Peter looked and said, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Please don't tell me you are declaring faith. When you want to marry a young man, you want to marry a young woman, you cannot say for better, for worse. Let me tell you the truth. If you like, reject it. That's how life is. Life will get better. Sometimes it comes down. Sometimes you are richer. Sometimes you are poorer. This is not a big deal. You are confessing like that because you thought it's a big deal. You thought it's the end of the world. Paul said, no matter what, I'm independent of circumstances. I can be abundance. I can be little. So for Paul, it's not an issue. Tell him to take that vow. He will take it loudly. He will take it loudly. I made a decision once that returned. Look, life was hard. I was able to get a small, I was doing two jobs in Lagos those days. There was one I was doing was night. When my residency started, I got to say, because it was a day work. I wasn't, I'm not a surgeon, I'm not a gynecologist, so I wasn't working at night really. I'm a pathologist, so I worked during the day only. So at night, when I used to go and work, it became clear after some time that if you continue like this, you will die before your time. Except that my full-time federal government job was paying me six thousand naira a month. It went from five to six thousand. The other evening job was paying nine thousand. Two thirds of my income came from there. Yet it became clear. We're talking about spirit. Holy Spirit did not speak to me. I just reasoned. It became clear that I needed to leave that job for richer, for poorer. I wasn't married at that time, but I'm giving an idea. I resigned the job from any 15,000 a month, I dropped to 6,000. It's called for richer, 
for Paula. Why did I need to do that? It was a mind of the spirit for that time. So what happened? God now supplied. You know this God? He didn't answer me anything. What I did was sit in my house and stopped going to places. I just sat down there. <laughs> if you don't go out, you don't pay bus, you don't pay transport fare. You don't buy coke unnecessarily. You see, I'm telling you, I trimmed everything down. Ah, common sense. Want to go and buy shirt? It's not. Look, my wife used to say jokingly. It was not like a joke, but it was the truth. She said, I brought color into your life. She wasn't lying. Because before she came, all my shirts were white. <laughs> all. And, no, I'm not kidding. You open my wardrobe, first shirt, white. Second one, white. Third shirt, white. Fourth one, white. Fifth one, you're getting to the end, though. <laughs> white. I don't know whether it was a sixth one. She said, ah, you only wear white. <laughs> Why was I wearing white alone? Brethren, it was because if I wear white alone, you don't know how many shirts I have. <laughs> white shirts, they know they quick fit. They're already white. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, the part of it I didn't tell you. Is 90% of them were used shirts. They were not brand new. I didn't tell you that part. We knew where to buy them. 90% of them were used. They were not brand new. Wash them. Lightly starch them. Iron them. I come out looking straight. It was when this woman entered my life. It was today, purple shirt, orange. Which color I never wear? <laughs> Sometimes I look, I, one day I look at my wardrobe, I say, now wow. The rainbow. Rainbow inside that wardrobe. It's good to wait. It's good to wait. When, it, when we became poor, of course we just trimmed everything down. Stop going to places. So one guy came one day says marketing dinner. No dinner. Christmas time. Some guys that they make their money. They organize dinner for young people, young the yuppies, no? Upcoming professionals. When I saw the price, I looked at it. I will go out to dinner to eat this morning. I said something, one of my neighbors, a lady, she was very angry with me. You know what I said? I said, hey, man, who is this kind of food we die poor? Like, what do I mean? I said, in this salary, on this salary, we're any. Say dinner, it came to like 20% of a total month's income. Please don't be ashamed to tell people I can't afford it. There's no need to pretend. I look at the guys at the market, I look at the guy like, are you all right? Do you know the level? Do you know where you have come? Residence, residence quarters in loot to come and sell this. I found the value of the dinner. Why don't you go to where the bankers hang out? These doctors can't afford it. Leave them. I didn't miss words. Oh boy, please go somewhere else. Please, there's no point pretending for anybody. If they bring a shabby for you, say, ah, hey, Angela, I'm sorry, you, you did not buy my level. There's no fight. They come and tell you, say, I shall be. Just to buy, you not tell, you go buy the scarf. You go buy the lace. You go buy something. And I tell you, it's thirty-five thousand naira. Meanwhile, at the end of the month, your salary is forty-six thousand two fifty. And you collect. Sorry, me thief tear it from you in public. Because that's the height of foolishness. What's wrong with you? I mean, tell Angela. Angie, God bless you. But I will not be able to buy you a shabby. Why? I can't afford it. This is going to eat almost. You want me to owe you? And I can't owe things like this. 
If you have never given offering that you paid for six months, why should you be wearing clothes you are paying for six months? Tell her, Angela, don't worry. I have one fantastic white dress like this. I'll wear it just because of you. I'm telling you the truth. The, it's when you start avoiding her phone call, you know, dodging, and then, and then where I'll start from. And I've been calling you now. Oh, so you know I've been busy. Tell her, like they say, oh her. Angie, I should be not this time. Why? It's too costly. She can. Uh, that is how to enjoy slim times. Do you get my point? That's how to endure. Many times people are talking about uh, life is better else elsewhere. Let me tell you as a believer. Let me make this statement to you. If you make that statement, you're in trouble. You know what God said? In returning and in rest, you will be saved. Running up and down does not prosper Christians. I'll read the scripture and I think I'll begin to close. Genesis chapter 49. Verse 14. He said, Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between the sheepfolds. When he saw that the resting place was good and that the land was pleasant, he bowed his shoulder to bear burdens and became a slave at first labor. That is Genesis chapter 49, verses 14 and 15. He said, when, this, this is the principle from, 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 of it. When a child of God is drawn here and there because of what he thinks, what she thinks a beautiful land, he said what happens is that the fellow is subjecting himself to a risk of becoming a slave at forced labor. Many of your cousins that can't come home, they can't buy the ticket. Bear that in mind. You know, I've thought about it. On this earth, there is nowhere that is safe. There is nowhere that prosperity is free. A friend of mine in the UK, I, we were talking the other day. I thought about some of our friends who have moved over to Saudi to go and work for a short while. He said, when I told him how much they were earning, he said, ah, maybe I should move from UK and go to Saudi. This is a man in the UK. I told him that these guys can save a certain amount in working for one year. Is it two years? And they'll come back home. He said, working in the UK, I need to work for like 10 years to do that. There is nowhere. That's what I'm going to say. You can go ahead. There is nowhere. That's the point I'm making. From my called me yesterday and was describing some family issues. Some of a relative and all of that. This is in the US. When he finished, I said, indeed. Safety is of the Lord. You know what God said? In returning and in rest, you will be saved. What does that mean in returning? Every situation of life, God is speaking to you through them. Let me say that so I can close. Maybe I, I, I may develop this thought. I don't intend to teach. Not a long series. Maybe one next time I come, I finish it just two messages and I'm done. Every situation of life, God is speaking to you through them. Or through it. Each situation, he's speaking to you through that situation. There is a lesson you must learn. That's what he meant when he said that it is good to wait for the Lord. When he said, in returning and in rest. If you see what he said, he said that by explaining to them, okay, I've left that portion. You know, for times, let me just speak. He explained to them that, look, these people are in situations. They are in problems. Then they start looking for their own way to solve it. They will carry their energy around to Egypt. They will pass through dangerous routes to get there. I hope you're getting my point. That's what I was doing initially. I broke somewhere and I gave a modern interpretation. They will swim, they will get onto boats, go through treacherous rivers, uh, waters, because of the quality of the boats. They are small good people. He said, what are they trying to do? They are trying to get to Egypt because they said Egypt will deliver us. He said, but the promise of Egypt is vanity. He said, that's why I call her Rahab. Let me just get back there. Which verse is that? Yeah, okay, thank you. He said the harmless dragon. That is, the, re- the dragon looks big. It looks mighty. It looks fearful, but can't do anything. That the place looks prosperous, it doesn't mean you will prosper there. 
I hope you're getting my point here. That's what he was saying. He said, you see people go through a lot of difficulty. They travel through the wilderness, a place of lionesses and lions, a place where vipers and poisonous snakes live. All this, and Egypt will give you nothing in return. He said, Egypt's promises are worthless. Therefore, I call her Rahab, the harmless dragon. Listen to this. What is Egypt? Everywhere a child of God thinks there is security and prosperity. Without first coming back and say, God, what are you saying to me in this situation? Even though the situation looks common. I hope you get my point. Now, start with that. Even though it looks common, it doesn't mean it is. The child of God is special. One man listened to him teach many years ago. He said, what was the problem with Elkanah? He said, Elkanah's problem was that God was looking for a replacement for Eli's family. The Elkanah and Elimelech were contemporaries. Now, what did Elkanah do? He ran down to Moab. Are you getting my point? But in the family of Elimelech, Hannah began to pray. And from that family came forth who? Samuel. His own explanation was that in that generation, what they were supposed to produce was Samuel. But that the man that went to Moab could not produce it. Let me end by making the statement I made before. Just so, you know, maybe we'll, we'll continue from this point. In this life, everybody is supposed to produce something. God uses you to bring something into the earth. I've said that one before. There are two things to produce. First of all is what? The image of God. The likeness of Christ. That's the primary thing. But beyond that, there is something God is using each individual to introduce. We talked about Hannah. That God pressed Hannah until she understood that and made her declaration and her commitment in that regard. God pressed her. Everybody has a somewhere he or she must get to give birth to. What is your somewhere? I don't know. And listen, just like Penina pressed Hannah until she got the point. In the same manner, circumstances in life will press each individual. It doesn't mean you're a big sinner. Sometimes you didn't do anything wrong. What did Hannah do that was wrong? Nothing. But she's still there to step into something. So God caused situations to press her. There are many people that the God said, look, this, this, this guy will never do well in this life as long as this job is paying him so much. Sack him. Then after six months of being hungry, God will now press him to go and start doing something else. In, that, in the midst of that, he will birth his destiny. The way to abort destiny is to disappear from difficult situations without praying first. That is how to abort destiny. One situation is tight. Run away. Let me tell you something. When God... <laughs> hey, God... Maybe later, if God allows me, I'll get back to that God the judge thing. Even if God says, this is punishment. You know what he says? Be it. Let me tell you something about the punishment of God when he's disciplining his children. It hardly ever lasts the whole length. For example, he said to David, now that you have done what I said you should not do, because clearly God has instructed David not to number Israel. That was not recorded for us, but God had instructed him. That was why God was so harsh in judgment. God's judgments are that difficult when the instructions are clear. Are you getting my point? If the instruction was not clear, it doesn't do you so harshly. He said, him that knows what to do, the servant that knows what to do and does not do it, is beaten with what? Many stripes. But the one that doesn't do it because he does not know, is beaten with just a few stripes. So when David was punished harshly, he must have known. How would he not know? How did Joab know? David must have known. He must have told them when they were younger. He must have told them when the kingdom was smaller. They now got into a competition with neighboring kings on who had the greatest empire. Yet, of course, that one, they, remember there was no atonement. God said, hey, listen, you have a choice of three. Three, three years of famine, three months, your enemies pursue you, or three days in my hands. David looked and said, oh, more. You know, God, you know that one God didn't hear, sorry. David said, yeah. Three years of famine, that is too long. Three years, three months of my enemies. These enemies that I have dealt with, like, like, I won't try it. Said, tell the Lord, 
three days in his hands because we know he's merciful. I know David was right. A day and a half was what the judgment lasted. God now said, okay, offer a sacrifice. This time around, I'll accept the sacrifice. So that's why it's good to wait. Even though God says, don't worry, you'll be at this level for the next 10 years. If you argue, you'll be there for 12 years. If you try to prove a point, it's 14 years. If you are strong-headed about it, it's 15 years. God's years have no end. Did you hear what I said? God's years are counting in how long it takes to repent and get the full point. So when you go, the Lord says to you, you'll be here for 10 years. Actually, you, you will sign the contract. The only job they will give you, they will bond you. You are a millionaire before. Now they are going to give you a job. The money is not too much. They say, oh, God said, look, before people will just take the job and run away. You have to stay at least two years. Ah! And if you sign, you can't go away. You know what God is saying? Sign. I want you to sign. I'm punishing you. If I'm the one punishing you, sign. Five-year contract, he will sign it. He said, don't complain. Work well and work hard. You only when you get it like that and you are rejoicing. What happened is that as the angel began to approach Jerusalem, David looked and said, God, I have a question. Who sinned? Was it not me? What about all these small, small boys that are dying in this process? Please now. Okay, come and punish me personally. God, look, look, look. I say, bring a sacrifice. Converted the punishment to sacrifice. Say, don't worry, Jesus will chop the rest later. <laughs> that was what happened. Anytime you offer an animal and God accepts it, he has passed that one to Jesus. Because the blood of bulls and goats can't take away sin. So, on what basis did he forgive you? It's Jesus that's going to pay for it. So he said, calm your head down. You will stand a better chance at recovery. When you calm down, even if God is the one that kept you in a slim place. If you want to now be, if you want to be frustrated permanently in life, let me tell you something. Look, over the last few years, I've learned it too. I've realized that there's no, you can't be. Let just pray, say, God, please don't oppose me. If God opposes you, you know, God told them, you will see my opposition. That's what I told Israel. You will see my opposition. If God opposes you, you will run to which country is the pro- most prosperous? I don't even know now. Okay, let's just say the one everybody running to Canada. They will give you a job. Are you getting my point? 300,000 Canadian dollars a year is your starting salary. As you land like this, God say, hey, this boy doesn't understand yet. The first day at work, you will break something to be 3 million. (laughs) One day, a friend of mine took pictures inside one very beautiful car, Lamborghini. I remember that day, even me, I, I fell in love with the car. He took a picture of himself, sent it to me. This was in the US. He said he paid a hundred dollars for those to, to enter the car and take the pictures. You no, know, is it a hundred some dollars, yeah? And I said, well, you didn't drive it. <laughs> he said that they have this offer for drive. No, I think he paid is it twenty dollars for the pictures? But to drive is a hundred dollars, just a short drive. I said, Why you not drive now? He said, Banky. He said, I know when jump moved away, all my work in America. <laughs> and I said, but there's insurance. He said, look, th- those things. He said, when you read it closely, you will see some small, small things inside that you did not see. He said, please, I've heard of these cars. I don't want trouble. And of course, around that time, I read of one guy in UK. He went and bought one. As he was left, leaving the shop, he crashed the car and... That he survived was a miracle. So my friends say, I beg, I don't want to work. All the work I'm doing in America to pay for, <laughs> for a car that I found $100,000. He said, beg, I know fit. So he rushed, when God said, you will see my position. The first you get, at, get to work, before you finish signing something, before you pay your insurance, don't be angry. You know what's, who's doing you? God. You are seeing his opposition. That is why, Christian, that thing I have learned. If God is not on your side, you're on a wrong, you're on a bad side. So what should you do? You pray until he said, in returning. Now that's what I'm getting to. Let me stop it here. In returning and in rest, you will be saved. That is, no matter the situation you are in now, there is something I want you to learn. There's a position I want to push you into. That is how your salvation will come. Let's bow down here. Let me stop it here. Pick it up from there next time.
He said, in a returning and in rest, you will be saved. 